With the previous videos, we took a look at how to integrate test containers with both JUnit 5 and JUnit 4 and added an example on how to uh, start a Postgres database locally to start our whole application context and write integration tests for our Spring Boot application. What we will now take a look at is a new feature which is currently in alpha state of test containers that allows us to reuse our Docker containers. So with the current setup, we would always start and stop new containers and we won't be able to reuse them. So let's quickly demonstrate this. So if we take a look at our currently running containers, there is nothing running. And if we now execute our test and now quickly check again what's going on, we can see here two containers. One container is from test containers to manage all the execution and the starting of containers, which is this container here. And at the top, you can see our actual Postgres database, which was started some seconds ago with an ephemeral port here mapped to the internal Postgres port. And if we now take a look again after our tests uh, successfully executed, we'll see that there are no containers anymore. So by default, test containers ensures to clean them up afterwards. This is nice for having not much running containers locally, but for performance. This uh, slows down your integration tests a little bit, as there is always this small overhead of starting the containers. And depending on what you're doing and how many you start, this might take a lot of time. So therefore, we can use this reuse feature and for this, let me duplicate our test first. So I will show it for JUnit 5, but the same applies for JUnit 4. So the first thing we have to change is actually uh, we should not reuse the extension from JUnit 5. So we will not let this library manage the lifecycle of our containers, but we will manually start them. And therefore I'm using the uh, singleton pattern of starting the containers with a static block in here. For this, let's first define our field here at the top. And what we can then do is basically in this static block, initialize our container and once we initialize it, we can call the start method to actually start it. So with the JUnit 5 extension and the JUnit 4 rule, um, this is done in the background for you, but for this reuse feature, we can't actually rely on this as, we, as this would otherwise still stop our containers, which are marked to be reused. So that's the first thing you have to remember here. Next, we have to actually opt in that we want to reuse them. So there is a with reuse method on all of the containers provided by test containers. So this will actually return a generic container. So we have to cast it again to our Postgres container here. So that's not a big problem here. And now what this will do when the class is uh, created, the static block is, gets executed and will start our container. And with this line 20 here, we basically say this should be reused. So don't stop it after the test uh, uh, was successful. The rest stays the same. So actually we don't touch any uh, thing regarding the actual test. What comes next is a second opt-in we have to provide to make use of this feature. So therefore we have to adjust our test containers file within our home directory. So if there's a none yet, you can create one. It's testcontainers.testcontainers.properties. And here, so if you execute test containers for the first time, it will create it for you and will already prepare some configuration here. But what we need, we have to add this testcontainers.reuse.enable to now also opt in on our machine here. So with this setup, you could also share this code with other developers or the CI server where the reuse feature is actually not enabled. But for working locally, where you want to run the integration tests um, on a regular basis during local development, 
uh, you actually want this feature. So this is the way to provide the second opt-in. So once we have this all in place, we can now execute our tests again. And we will see the first test execution for sure has to start the container. So this. So test is working as expected. And now let's have a look at which containers are running. And you can see here, so even though the test finished, we can still see that our Postgres container is still up and running. And if we now execute our test again, we should see a way faster test. So this is a little bit hard to track down, but you might have seen the actual bootstrapping of test containers usually takes a little bit longer, but with the running container, which test containers recognize, this is now way faster and our tests also now succeed. So to use this feature, make sure you um, always leave your resources in a state where you are able to reuse them. So if you leave them in a state where they can't be reused and subsequent tests will fail, you might not be able to use this feature. But for all other containers, for example, for the database, where you also have the transactional support, where all changes are rolled back after tests, this is pretty neat and it um, reduces the build times locally and you can execute your integration tests way faster.